Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today we're returning to Dr. Joseph Murphy, who did such a wonderful job of teaching how to access the subconscious mind and the power of the mind. And the way he taught it was so easy and powerful. And check out my previous episodes. I read his book, How to Attract Money, and we talk about making a psychic treasure map and how to control fear and emotions. All of those episodes have been so fun to read. I love Dr. Joseph Murphy so much. He has changed my life in so many ways, and I always love to share a new teaching from him. This particular one, Dr. Murphy emphasizes the power of quieting the mind to bring mind magic and make riches flow. At the end of this, I will read his prayer and meditation because the emphasis and idea behind this teaching is quieting the mind. I will leave several minutes at the end of the meditation to go into the silence much like we do with Neville Goddard. How to use mind magic to make riches flow. A few weeks ago, I attended a religious convention at Airlie near Washington, D.C., where I spoke on the topic, Law Which Never Changes. During the five days I was there, I had a long talk with a very successful an immensely wealthy man who told me that the secret of his health, wealth, and outstanding achievement was in the developing of what he called the quiet mind. He had a card in his pocket on which the following great truths were inscribed. The superior man is always quiet and calm, Confucius. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Isaiah 30.15 He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Proverbs 16.32 The Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase and in all the works of thine hands. Therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. Deuteronomy 16.15 Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Psalm 127.1 All these statements point out that your strength, success, power, and riches come from serenity, from the inner peace of quietness, and from confidence in the laws of life and the response of your subconscious mind. How this rich man used these truths. This man said that every morning of his life he anchored his mind on the above mentioned truths, repeating them slowly, quietly, and lovingly, knowing that as they were impressed in his subconscious mind, he would be compelled to express success, health, vitality, and new creative ideas. He has established four large corporations and is advisor to many executives in different fields. He travels the world over. He said to me while presenting me with one of his meditation cards, which he dispenses freely, that 30 years ago he met a man on a ship to Europe who explained to him that if he took certain constructive words from the Bible, words which represent the eternal truths of God and His law, His mind would become anchored on the Supreme Presence, which responds as you call upon it. The whole key to His riches was that He knew, as He meditated on the above, mentioned biblical phrases regularly, systematically, and repetitiously, that He was activating the latent power within his subliminal depths, compelling him to move onward, upward, and Godward. 
a businessman discovers the riches of the silence. Carlyle said, silence is the element in which great things fashion themselves. Emerson said, let us be silent that we may hear the whispers of the gods. A prominent businessman told me that he attributes all his successful business decisions to 15-minute silent periods in the mornings. He withdraws his attention and scenery awareness from the external world, quiets his body, closes his eyes, and contemplates the great truth that infinite intelligence is within him. Silently he affirms that God is guiding him, that new creative ideas are given to him, that the divine presence will govern the conferences of the day, that God thinks, speaks, and acts through him, and that the right words are given to him by the supreme wisdom within him, and that all decisions for his company are based on right action, blessing all. He then spends about five minutes in what he calls transcendental meditation by simply imagining God's river of peace flowing through his whole being. Oftentimes, while in this quiet period, solutions to acute business and personnel problems pop into his mind, problems with which he and other associates had been struggling for days. How to get the answers. He states he has discovered that the quickest way in all the world to get an answer to a problem is to turn over your request to that center of quietness, knowing the answer will emerge. Many times the answer comes within an hour, although the answer may come a few days later or perhaps a week later, but it always comes when he is preoccupied with something else. Apparently his subconscious mind gathers all the material necessary and then at the right time presents it full blown to his conscious reasoning mind. Some of the ideas which are resurrected are worth a small fortune. One of his recent ideas emerging from his quiet period was worth over $200,000. How a woman received marvelous answers in the quiet period concerning her possible marriage. Every Sunday we open with a quiet period, a directed silence wherein all are instructed not to take their problems into the higher self within, which knows only the answer, but on the other hand, to contemplate the answer, the solution, the creative ideas, the way out welling up from their subjective depths. I point out that there are creative answers in their subconscious minds that could and would revolutionize their entire lives. Last Sunday, a woman said to me, all of a sudden, I saw a scene in my mind's eye of the man I was about to marry. He was with his wife and his two children. Intuitively, I knew it was his wife. I had been in doubt and was hesitating about the marriage. I received my answer and when talking to him later about what I had experienced in silence at the Wilshire Evil Theater, he admitted that he was not divorced and who he is about to marry me just for my money. They parted in peace. She gave him a book to read, The Secrets of the I Ching by Dr. Joseph Murphy, which he subsequently told her had transformed his life. How a quiet mind dissolved destructive criticism. A young woman in charge of a very large department employing a great number of girls told me that she is subject to a great deal of criticism and backbiting, but takes it all philosophically by following the injunction of the Bible. When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? Job 34, 29. 
She said, I join up with the God presence within me, realizing no one can hurt me as one with God is a majority. Moreover, I realize that if some girl is jealous and speaks ill of me, she cannot hurt me, because I know that negative thoughts and statements of others have no power to create the things they suggest, and I refuse to transfer the power within me to others. My thought is creative. My thoughts are God's thoughts, and God's power is with my thoughts of good. She is a wise young woman. She knows that no matter what lies others may spread about her, they cannot hurt her unless she accepts the thought mentally. Because others speak ill of you does not make it so. Your thought is creative, and you are the master of your own mind, and should positively refuse to let others disturb you or manipulate your mind. There is an old German proverb, a lie cannot go very far for it has short legs. Her philosophy is simple and to the point, in that she said that if some girl points a finger of criticism at her, the girl's other three fingers are pointing toward herself. It is as simple as that. The riches of the quiet mind induce sleep for a chronic insomnia sufferer. I gave the following formula to a businesswoman who said she had to take two sleeping tablets every night because she was so tensed and keyed up. In bed, talk to your body as follows. My toes are relaxed. My ankles are relaxed. My feet are relaxed. My legs are relaxed. My abdominal muscles are relaxed. My heart and lungs are relaxed. My spine is relaxed. My hands and arms are relaxed. My shoulders are relaxed. My neck is relaxed. My brain is relaxed. My eyes are relaxed. My facial muscles are relaxed. I now feel God's river of peace flowing through me, permeating every atom of my being. I sleep in peace. I wake in joy. She quietly repeated these simple truths every night, knowing her body is subject to her thoughts. And after a week or so of practicing this discipline, she had no further trouble. She has discovered the meaning of these great truths. Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace, Job 22.21, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. How a tense and anxious executive discovered the riches of healing passages of the Bible. Recently, I talked with an executive who said to me, my problem is extreme tension and anxiety about every decision I have to make. Accordingly, I gave him what I call a spiritual prescription, which would bring to his troubled mind. I suggested to him that he used the following spiritual truths by affirming them quietly, feelingly, and knowingly his excess tension would gradually abate. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Isaiah 30.15 But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Philippians 4.19 Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Job 22.21 Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. when he give quietness, who then can make trouble. Job 34, 29. This executive affirmed these healings, therapeutic passages of scripture several times daily, spending five or 10 minutes at each quiet session. 
and he found composure, peace, serenity, and mind control. He discovered that peace is the power at the heart of God. A salesman discovers the secret of increased sales in the riches of a quiet mind. Marcus Aurelius, the wise Roman emperor, said, A man's life is dyed by the color of his imagination. In talking to a salesman the other day, I learned that he was very apprehensive and worried about what he called a nut letter from his sales manager criticizing him for his low sales. I suggested to him that night and morning he read the 23rd Psalm, which would quiet his mind. I suggested that his faculty of using his imagination constructively would transform his life. Imagination is the art of projecting images, the discipline of mental images. This salesman reversed the mental picture of poor sales and failure. Morning and night for five or ten minutes after reading out loud the 23rd Psalm, he imagined his sales manager in front of him, congratulating him on his excellent sales. He felt the naturalness of his handshake. He clearly heard his voice, saw his smile, and heard him say over and over again, Congratulations on your splendid performance. You are being promoted to a higher echelon in the corporation. He lulled himself to sleep every night operating that mental movie. He found his sales improving. He also took a course in public speaking and at the end of three months he was made district manager, receiving a wonderful increase in salary and commissions. He is on the way to the top by repeating the mental movie night and morning in a quiet, passive, receptive way. He implanted the idea of promotion and advancement in his subconscious mind, and the latter opened up the way for the perfect manifestation of the impression he made on his deeper mind. How the riches of quiet understanding healed a threatened mental crack-up. One day, a man from San Francisco flew down to see me. He was extremely tense. His doctor had diagnosed his condition as anxiety neurosis, which is another name for chronic worry and excess tension. He was very successful financially and was sales manager of a very big corporation. He was very well liked by the president and vice president of the corporation. As I talked with him, the root or real cause of his trouble came to light. A classmate of his was sales manager of a rival corporation, but had been promoted to the position of president of the corporation. He admitted that he was jealous and envious of his classmate's promotion. He was mentally competing with him. He said, you know that fellow beat me at everything in school and college. He even took away the girl I loved and married her. I explained to him that the only true competition there was in life was that which existed between the idea of success and the idea of failure in his own mind and that he was born to win, not fail, for the infinite could not fail. Therefore, all he had to do was focus his attention on success, and then all the powers of his subconscious would back him up and compel him to succeed, as the law of the subconscious is compulsive. He began to see that the past is dead, and that nothing matters but this moment. As he changed his present thoughts and kept them changed, his whole world would magically melt into the image and likeness of his contemplation. I also explained to him that by entertaining envious thoughts, he was actually impoverishing himself, and that this was one of the worst possible attitudes to hold, because his negative thinking and his feeling of inferiority plus envy and jealousy were playing havoc with his mental and emotional life. 
and would tend to block his expansion along all lines. The Simple Remedy The remedy was very simple. He decided to bless and sincerely wish greater prosperity and success for his former classmate, whose apparently more successful and prosperous state had incited him to envy. Accordingly, he prayed frequently as follows, I recognize God as my instant and everlasting supply. Promotion is mine in divine order. Success is mine in divine order. God's wealth flows to me in avalanches of abundance, and I am divinely guided to give better service every day. I know, believe, and rejoice that God is prospering my former classmate, and I sincerely wish for him all the blessings of life. Whenever he comes to my mind, I will immediately affirm God multiplies your good. After a few weeks, he discovered that the envious thoughts lost all momentum, and he found that the cause of his anxiety and excess tension had been due entirely to his state of mind. This young man has been promoted recently to executive vice president and undoubtedly is on the way to the top. The Bible says, If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Job 22:23. By blessing those whose promotion success and wealth annoy us or incite our envy or jealousy and by wishing that they become more prosperous and more successful in every way we heal our own minds and open the door to the riches of the infinite out of the abundance of your heart you can pour out the gifts of praise love joy and laughter you can give a transfusion of courage, faith, and confidence to all those around you, and you will discover that by blessing others, you too will be blessed. And all sense of envy, inferiority, and lack will be overcome. A college student discovers the riches of the quiet mind. A fourth-year medical student said to me, I'm haunted by a shadowy, pervasive anxiety day and night, a fear of failure and apprehension about the future. He said that in one examination his mind went blank and he could only answer a few of the questions. This young man's trouble was anxiety and worry. He was afraid of oral and written examinations and was giving the worry orders to his subconscious mind, he developed stress, which brought about a mental block. I suggested that every night prior to sleep, he should affirm slowly and quietly, I am relaxed, at peace, serene, and calm. I have a perfect memory for everything I need to know at every moment of time and point of space. I am divinely guided in my studies and I am completely relaxed and at peace at all examinations I pass all my examinations in divine order and sleep in peace and I wake in joy I explained to him that all of these ideas would sink deeply into his subconscious mind becoming a part of him so that either in an oral or written examination he would give an excellent account of himself. At last report, he is doing splendidly. His anxiety has been lifted, and his latent abilities and memory of all he learned were set free. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Isaiah 30.15 Points to Remember Confucius said the superior man is always quiet and calm. The Bible says, In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. The secret of health, wealth, and outstanding achievement 
is in developing what is called the quiet mind. By taking certain constructive words from the Bible which represent the eternal truths of God and His law, your mind becomes anchored on the supreme presence which responds as you call upon it. And you experience the riches of the quiet mind. 2. Carlyle said, Silence is the element in which great things fashion themselves. Emerson said, Let us be silent that we may hear the whispers of the gods. Silently affirm that God is guiding you, that the divine wisdom will govern all your activities of the day and that God thinks, speaks, and acts through you every day. Claim divine right action in all your undertakings. Practice transcendental meditation by imagining God's river of peace and love flowing through your whole being. As you do this, you will receive answers to all your problems, welling up from the depths of yourself, and wonders will happen in your life. One man who practices this procedure has already received ideas worth over $200,000 for his corporation. 3. When you quiet your mind and immobilize your attention, Realize, only God knows the answer. Contemplate the answer, the solution, knowing that before you call, the answer is known to your higher self. You will discover that there are creative answers in your subconscious that will revolutionize your life. One woman during our silent period on Sunday morning had a subliminal thought from her subconscious mind which revealed to her that the man she was about to marry was already married and had two children. 4. When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? Job 34.29 The suggestions, statements, and actions of others cannot hurt you. The creative power is in you. It is the movement of your own thought. Does another person's thought govern you, or do you govern your own mind? When your thoughts are God's thoughts, God's power is with your thoughts of good. 5. If you have difficulty sleeping, talk to your body, telling it to relax. Let go. Your body will obey you, and then affirm slowly and quietly, I sleep in peace, and I wake in joy, for he careth for me. 6. You can eradicate excess tension and anxiety by affirming the following spiritual truths three or four times a day that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee Isaiah 26 3 in quietness and confidence shall be your strength Isaiah 30 15 acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace thereby good shall come unto thee Job 22.21 When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? Job 34.29 As you dwell on these great biblical truths, a healing therapeutic vibration permeates your entire body. And these spiritual vibrations enter into your subconscious mind, neutralizing all the fear and worry patterns and a sense of peace and tranquility will govern you. 7. A man's life is dyed by the color of his imagination. A salesman whose sales were dropping imagined his sales manager, congratulating him on his excellent sales. He made a habit of running his mental movie twice a day, feeling the naturalness of the sales manager's handshake hearing his voice and lulling himself to sleep every night with the imaginary words of his sales manager. Congratulations on your splendid success. By repetition, he implanted the idea of promotion in his subconscious mind, and eventually he experienced a wonderful promotion and increase in salary. 8. The only place competition takes place 
is in your own mind. The idea of success and the thought of failure compete. You were born to succeed, not to fail. The infinite within you can't fail. Give your attention to the idea of success and all the powers of your deeper mind will back you up. A sales manager was envious of a former classmate and he did not know that this attitude of mind was causing his anxiety neurosis and interfering with his expansion. The remedy was simple. He decided to bless and prosper his former classmate, wishing for him all the blessings of life. And as he continued blessing him, all the envious and jealous thoughts lost momentum and his anxiety neurosis disappeared. Moreover, he was promoted to executive vice president by blessing the man whose promotion and success had previously annoyed him. He discovered he prospered himself also. Prayer always prospers. 9. A medical student was fearful and apprehensive about his examinations. Actually, he was fearing failure. This developed stress which blocks the mind. He affirmed prior to sleep, I am relaxed, at peace, poised, serene, and calm. I have a perfect memory for everything I need to know at all times, everywhere. I pass all examinations in divine order. I sleep in peace, and I wake in joy. These truths sank into his subconscious mind, and he is now doing splendidly. He discovered the riches of the truth. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Isaiah 30, 15. 10. You can get to experience the benefits of quieting the mind through the use of meditation. Meditation for the riches of the quiet mind. The superior man is always quiet and calm. In quietness, and in confidence shall be your strength. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. The Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase and in all the works of thine hands. Therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. Except the Lord build the house they labor in vain that build it. Infinite intelligence is within me. I affirm that God is guiding me, that new creative ideas are given to me, that the divine presence will govern my day, that God thinks, speaks, and acts through me, that the right words are given to me by the supreme wisdom within me, and that all decisions for my business and company are based on right action, blessing all. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? I recognize God as my instant and everlasting supply. Success is mine in divine order. God's wealth flows to me in avalanches of abundance and I am divinely guided to give better service every day. I now feel God's river of peace flowing through me, permeating every atom of my being. Those that planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. I am still and at peace. My heart and my mind are motivated by the spirit of goodness, truth, and beauty. My thought is now on the presence of God within me. This stills my mind. 
I know that the way of creation is spirit moving upon itself. My true self now moves in and on itself, creating peace, harmony and health in my body and affairs. I am divine in my deeper self. I know I am a son of the living God. I create the way God creates by the self-contemplation of spirit. I know my body does not move of itself. It is acted upon by my thoughts and emotions. I now say to my body, be still and quiet. It must obey. I understand this and I know it is a divine law. I take my attention away from the physical world. I feast in the house of God within me. I meditate and feast upon harmony, health, and peace. These come forth from the God essence within. I am at peace. My body is a temple of the living God. God is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Imagine God's river flowing and go into the silence and let the silence answer and guide you.
thank you. I hope that that silence helped answer questions and that it was productive for you. This lecture is wonderful. It emphasizes that one of the most important things, and that is to be still, to find silence. And it is the most important beginning part to gaining control of your mind. There's a couple important lessons in here that are important. And it's just a way of dealing with neuroses and thoughts. I meet a lot of people that are very competitive with siblings and with friends and with people they work with. And it always comes back to you. It always does. It causes tension. Whatever you wish for someone else badly will come back to you every time. So where you're in competitive environments, be very careful about wishing badly for people that you're competitive with. And when you do this, you'll find success for yourself. It works every time. And the idea of being aware of your overthinking, stilling the mind, those periods of silence are so important. Just five minutes. Ask yourself a question and go into the silence and you will get answers. You don't need to completely clear your mind. And you can use this in so many ways. Even if you're wanting to, if you're suffering from insomnia and you can't sleep, or if you think that you're about to go crazy, even if you're in college and you're struggling, you can use these techniques, quieting your mind. Sometimes it seems like you have so much stuff to do and it's so difficult uh, that you become overwhelmed. So the silence as a way of gathering your thoughts together, it always works every single time. Why did Neville Goddard always end all of his lectures with let us go into the silence? Because in that silence, you will hear the voice of God. Oftentimes we're not listening. We pray, we're talking to God, we're telling God what we want. But how often are you listening? The listening the silence in that silence is when you will hear the voice all episodes of the reality revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com make sure that you put a review for my book on amazon or review my book on audible make sure you follow me on instagram at the underscore reality underscore revolution if you do those things, you'll be put in a drawing and I will give a free one hour coaching session. So be sure to do one of those things to sign up and I will announce the drawing soon. And I love you guys so, so much. And welcome to the Reality Revolution. <laughs>